want to learn. The goal is to uh, not just learn the resilience to what to be. We want to be uh, because uh, that is something that uh, we all have and uh, we want to increase that resilience in us. So I'll begin with what is resilience and how to develop that in a very simple manner. So we'll go uh, stepwise. And then at the end, we will have a meditation, uh, a short meditation and then question answers. So I'm going to use a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to bring it on. Uh, so, <clears throat> Uh, what do we want uh, in our life? And, and most people, if you ask this question, and uh, most people will, most souls will say that uh, we want uh, a peace, love, happiness, feeling good, and being victorious. That, that's what we want in life. So here's the presentation. <clears throat> so like I was saying, <clears throat> um, everybody wants peace, love, happiness, feeling good, victorious. And uh, that's the goal of life. That's the purpose. Um, and resilience can help us have achieved this goal easily. In reality, what we see this uh, is uh, we feel happy, we feel good when everything is nice and good, but when a difficult situation occurs, that uh, that feeling goes away and then we come back yeah. and then we go. So it's up and down, up and down. And a uh, lot of time we go down and when we come back to our stage, we come back at the wounded stage we don't have that same confidence that we had before. We don't have that uh, uh, strength that we used to have before. So each uh, difficulties uh, gives a trauma to us and makes us weaker and weaker. <clears throat> so that's a lack of resilience. So once we have resilience, we would not do that. We would go through the problem situations nicely and come out just like how we were before. And so um, I just want to give an example just to simplify this as uh, imagine there, there is a uh, tough situation, a difficult situation, and there are two individuals facing them. Uh, one, with the, uh, one with the power of resilience and one without, or one stronger person and one weaker person. And they're both go through the situation and it is the nature of the situation to come and go. It is not the individual who will, uh, who will prevent the situation or stop the situation. It will occur in, in both these individuals. Uh, but how would the powerful individual uh, come out of that situation? And, and what kind of experience that he would have as he went through the situation? And how would the other individual do? You know, the answer is clear. A powerful individual, he will come out un, unscratched. He will be just like how he was before. And, and as he went through the, the process or difficulties, he would not feel that down or depressed during the process. He would feel more in control or more happier than the other individual. So in our life, we may meet with many different, different difficulties and how we deal with the difficulties as we uh, cross oh, cross those difficulties, uh, what our mindset is. Are we uh, becoming tense or are we uh, uh, feeling uh, down by that uh, situation? That's important. And so if that is the case, then uh, we definitely need to work on our resilience. So th this is the uh, definition of the resilience. Um, uh, 
it is actually, there are two components in this one. The ability to deal with something difficult and number two, uh, quickly recover to the original state. How I went in is how I want to come out. That's, that's the goal. And, and uh, the first part is uh, to positively deal with what is there. Positively deal, dealing with means not by uh, sulking through the process, but having that, uh, the sense of victory, victorious feeling, I go through the process and uh, have a total control as I go through the uh, difficulty. And uh, come back to my original state, meaning the, what, is my, what is our original state? The state of peace, power, purity, love, happiness, bliss, wisdom. These are the, uh, the core values that we all have. And the more quickly and more fully we recover to these state, uh, uh, such a stage, the more resilient we are, the more powerful we are, the more happier we are, and more, uh, the more we have achieved that goal that we, uh, we are looking for, that we want to be happy and peaceful always. <clears throat> and and uh, what are the uh, problems, difficulties, situations that we face? You know, they can be grouped into uh, things that I mentioned here. Uh, we come across uh, problems of the body, uh, problems of the things of the body, the, the possessions that I have, the problems uh, with the relations with the family, co-workers, or any outsiders, the problems with the nature. So all these problems we come across. Uh, and this includes most of the problems that we face day-to-day -day basis. And uh, the question is, <clears throat> um, are we losing our happiness as we go through these processes? As you can see, these things are very, very uh, common uh, things that occur. It is a common thing that uh, uh, you, are, you would have some kind of a disease. Uh, it is normal for an individual to just cease to exist. Uh, it, is, it is normal thing to uh, break, uh, that something will break down. Uh, you know, at work, you would have more stress, workload, expectations from the boss, family in the family also, high expectations. All these things are commonly seen and we commonly deal with that. So these problems are there, but are we getting stressed while we undergo them, while we uh, overcome these uh, problems? And if the answer is no, then we don't need this lecture. This is this is a uh, if you if you remain happy, then you're good. You you are a resilient being. You know how to be resilient. But if you ask yourself, uh, most of us will say, "No, I I am losing my happiness while I go through this, and I will be the one definitely." And so we are here. So. We need to learn that power of resilience. Uh, so the question is, uh, in this uh, uh, today's class, we will learn how to deal with any problem using that uh, as a resilient being, using the resilience. And the first and the most important uh, a tool to deal with any problem is using the power of discernment or knowing what is real. And this is the most important uh, factor. <clears throat> Why? Because uh, once I know what is real, I can eliminate many of those problems that we mentioned before uh, and just to prevent it. Like uh, in medical, they say prevention is better than cure. So once you identify, once you discern um, 
uh, once you discern what is right, what is wrong, what is real, what is not real, you essentially eliminate all of those problems that we mentioned before. And you'll see why. Uh, one of our senior brothers, uh, Brother Ken, uh, I wrote his quote. He says that only worry when you have all the facts. So we, you know, we worry over small things uh, on uh, whenever something happens, we start to worry. That means the worry means uh, coming down, not using the power of resilience. Um, but if you know all the facts, then that worry factor will be will be not there. And so the discernment is knowing real and unreal. And all those problems that we, we looked uh, before, these, we can eliminate all of them. If I know what is right and what is not. So in other words, are these real problems, the death, the disease, the loss, the uh, stress of the uh, work, the push and pull of the family responsibilities, are these real or unreal? And at a superficial level, we, we all say these are real problems because we live here, but spiritually, they are not actually, as a soul, these are not the problem that I have as a soul. These are body's problems. So I separate myself from the physical and by separating myself, I can say that, okay, I'm a soul. That means I am a indestructible and I am immortal being imperishable being. So where is the question of death? I did not die and I don't die as a soul. Uh, does, uh, do I lose anything? No, as a soul, I don't lose anything. Um, as a soul, I'm a powerful being. So there is no, and I'm free. I'm, I'm a totally free. There is no restrictions on me. The, the any extremes of the weather will not affect me here. So that's real me. So knowing that real me is important. So that is the power, that is the uh, tool number one to be resilient. The more you are, co more you are close to your core, the more you're close to your true self, the, the stronger you are and more resilient you would be. And that is that is hundred percent true. They, we we have uh, many examples of very uh, very resilient uh, souls, and they are resilient because they live close to their true identity. They they are in the body, they work as a body, but inside they are close to their true self. So that's the first uh, thing. <clears throat> First two, know what is right, the power of discrimination, power of dis discernment. The second uh, important tool to deal with any problems is acceptance. Uh, <clears throat> what happens when you don't accept? When you, when you have a problem and you don't accept, then what you're doing, you know, many people say, okay, uh, I am a soul and uh, this is not a, a problem that I'm facing. This is body's problem. That, that's not what we do. That's, it's neglecting the problem. So when you don't accept the problem, you are actually uh, not looking, not facing the problem eye to eye and you are denying its presence. So accepting the 
the situation accepting the problem is very important. When you accept, what happens is the all the questions that why it happened, why how it happened, why me, all these queue of the questions will stop. And your ego, your arrogance or um, your inferiority also goes away when you accept. Why? Because when you accept, you bow down. And when you accept, you let go. You let go. So bowing down and letting go simultaneously. Both of these will drop your ego of, one of them will drop your ego of arrogance and, and letting go will, will drop your ego of inferiority. So you will ne neither feel inferior or superior from the situation. So situation will be there and you say, okay, I understand you are there and I'm going to then deal with you. So immediately it gives you a powerful position and you have a plenty of time to deal with this problem and uh, your fear, anxiety, any of this negativity finishes or decreases when you have that uh, power. Um, you develop new ideas, how to deal with these problems. Uh, new skills, new opportunities opens up within you. And you come out even stronger than you were before when you accept. So accepting a problem is very important. The quicker you accept, the more time you will have, the stronger you'll, stronger you'll come out. Uh, the next uh, tool to uh, overcome any problem is detaching yourself from the from what's happening or the power to withdraw. Uh, withdraw does not mean a defeat. Withdraw does not mean you are shy away from that problem again. It is, you're just stepping back to your uh, original self. And uh, you disengage. At the same time, you're still here and able to deal with this problem a lot better with that power, the power of detach, detach, detaching from that situation. Your role and your responsibilities are still there, but you are separating yourself from that role and responsibilities. You, you, have, you use, exercise your original uh, powers of love, purity, peace, happiness, and then you deal with this problem. And you are able to manage that problem really well using this uh, power of withdrawing. Withdrawing is again, not pulling away from the problem, but stepping back to your original self so that you can use your a beautiful virtues that you have. And then you can uh, overcome that problem with, with grace in a graceful manner. That's what the uh, power of the withdrawing is. The next is the be a fighter. Be it's okay. Once you saw the problem, you understood this is this is real or this is not. You uh, went back to your origin went back to your, uh, withdrew and went back to your original self. And now the problem is still standing. How do you deal with this? You challenge this. <clears throat> you use, you be a soldier, like a soldier. Uh, you become uh, equipped. You are equipped with all the, the virtues and powers and the points of the knowledge that you've learned and deal with that situation 
in a lot better way. And uh, this is not something that you can do uh, when you're facing a problem. Uh, to be a soldier, you have to uh, do a lot of work beforehand. You need to be fit, you need to be alert, you need to practice, you need to do a, a drill every day. So all these are important uh, to be a victorious, to be a, um, a winner over the situation. Um, and uh, to be like that, you have to be a fit at any, any moment. You should be ready to be dealing with any problems at any moment. And uh, uh, one of our highly loved uh, soul, we call her mama, uh, she, say, she teaches us that uh, live like every moment as the last moment. And so you have to be ready to be dealing with any situation. You cannot just say that, okay, I will wait for the problem to come and then I, de I deal with it. That would be very, not very useful because then uh, the problem can get you down because uh, the problems uh, can become as strong as you are. So you have to be ahead of this game. It doesn't mean that you anticipate situations, uh, anticipate problems uh, and difficulties in everything that you do. It means that you make yourself fit, make yourself well equipped, make yourself alert and able that anything that comes in front of you, you can deal with that with ease without getting disturbed in a very stable way. That's what that, uh, that, is, that is what it takes to be a spiritual soldier. And when you are a spiritual soldier like that, no difficulties will, uh, will shake you. You remain uh, immo uh, immovable and unshakable. So that's a, another a tool to deal with any problem. And like I said, this, uh, this tool requires a lot of practice beforehand uh, before you uh, handle any situation. All, in fact, all of the, uh, the tools that, that we are going to discuss requires a lot of practice. Okay, then actively downsize the problem. Okay, so if there is a problem in front of, front of us, uh, one very important thing that we can do is uh, we can not make that problem bigger. You know, it's a, it's a habit of our weak mind that uh, when there is a problem, you, uh, you make it bigger. You, uh, have questions and you have worry and you have thoughts of the uh, depressing thoughts and you every time you think negatively like that the problem becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and so you have to reverse that make the mountain into molly so important things that we need to do need to do is first of all uh, do not magnify that problem. Whatever is there, do not magnify that. Artificially, and any, the more you think about it, the more you give it, it an importance, the bigger it will grow. And second is leave all the questions as we discussed earlier. What, why, how, why me, you know, what now? All these questions put aside because they does not they do not lead you anywhere. In fact, you will waste you will waste a lot of time in uh, and uh, you will, you would become weaker and now, and as a weaker person now you face the problem that problem. 
So that's a very important method to uh, downsize that problem. And again, uh, to do that, you have to have a complete control on your mind because mind will automatically start to worry when a problem is there. So the real deal about how do I make the mountain into mall hill is how I control my mind. That's what that, that means. And to control your mind, you need to have that spiritual exercises that you needed, needed to do. You need to know who you are and need to exercise and become that fit soldier like. And so no question will occur. Um, and then uh, using your, uh, the virtues like zeal and enthusiasm, you can overcome these problems uh, very easily. Uh, you can overcome the problem by fighting and struggling and, and uh, overcome that. But then when you look back, uh, you will see that you struggled a lot and uh, uh, you will feel tired at the end. Versus if you look at the problem as, a, as an opportunity to grow and look at the problem as a, as a game, uh, you would be easily go through that problem as if nothing happened and uh, you would uh, come out even stronger when you do that. So it's a, like a flying over the problem. You spread your wings of zeal and enthusiasm and fly over the problems. And once again, uh, to exercise the zeal and enthusiasm it requires a spiritual power. You, you, you need to be in a soul, more soul conscious stage. Uh, you can imagine if there is a problem in front of me, how I can have that enthusiasm to fight this problem. Because first of all, my mind is starting to worry. So how am I going to have that uh, zeal and enthusiasm? And so that requires a lot of practice that requires that I um, have that much control on me, uh, on my mind that, okay, uh, now stop worrying. Now, you know, uh, look at yourself, how strong you are. And uh, then your zeal will come, enthusiasm will come to, to fight. So um, the spiritual strength is needed there. <clears throat> and uh, of course, uh, using God as your support, it always helps in all situations. Um, God is your companion in every task that you perform. You know, that is a very well known uh, amongst all of us. Uh, but the, the question is, how do I make the God as my companion? Uh, we are very, it's very strange that we, uh, we remember God and we, uh, we feel his presence uh, when everything is nice and normal. But at the difficult times, uh, that we somehow forget him. Although we know that that's, he is the most important factor, uh, most important being who can, be, uh, who can be there for me. And at that very important time, we forget. And why? Because we are acting from a body conscious level. When a problem is, uh, is there, we totally become body conscious and there's no uh, sight of God then. If I'm looking the, uh, at a problem face to face, uh, the God uh, is not there because to hold the hand of God, I need to be a soul. Then he's there with me. Then both of us, you know, there's no problem uh, in front of us. So again, it's a very a difficult thing to do that 
I'm facing a very, very difficult problem and I'm becoming soul conscious and I'm holding hand of God and, and uh, trying to overcome that. Another, another important thing that uh, using, uh, using God uh, for your uh, difficult uh, situations is you, a lot of time uh, we say that, oh, he will take care of, you know, I, I have this problem and I pray to God and let him take care of, he will, I know he will take care of. But it is like giving your responsibilities to him. It is giving a task to him. Uh, he will, I don't think uh, it works like that. He would not, he would not be able to help you like that. You have to, you have to be work with him. Then he will help you. Yeah. That's, that's how to be, that's how you become his companion. You don't put him to work. You become his companion and both of you then will work. You have to take a step then he will be able to help. So that's a very important thing that we, we should know. Just praying will not help. Praying, yes. And also promising him, okay, I'm going to take such and such step. Then he will just give you a big push from behind. Then you'll get it. That's how it works. And uh, this is a, uh, I, I took this picture from uh, our studies, our spiritual study that I study. And uh, this is to explain um, what it, uh, the one of the, the very important uh, tool, how to look at a problem and how to deal with that. And so looking at a problem from a, a high stage, that's the key. When there is a situation, uh, it everything depends on how I am looking at that situation. Uh, am I looking at this situation while being under influence of that situation? Or am I looking at that situation out of that influence and then looking at it? it it's, these are two very different things. So uh, this is the diagram of the, the whole universe, I would say. <clears throat> this is the, our universe, the physical world that we know right here, where we have uh, all the planets, the moon, the star, and the, the, the black holes, whatever we have known through the science. This is that world. And beyond this world is a subtle world and soul world. This, this world here is not made up of any of these things right here. These are the, this is the world made up of five elements. And this is the world without those five elements. Um, so we are distinct from the five elements. The souls, this is the soul world, and this is the physical world. The soul comes to the physical world to play their part and go through the whole life drama. And then at the end of the, its journey, the soul will return to the soul world. That's how the, the soul journeys. And uh, <clears throat> there's a in-between phase here called subtle world where it is in between these two worlds, but it is still not uh, a part of this world here. <clears throat> the, more, the more subtle I become, the more upward I go. If you look at the diagram, I am I'm subtle here, I'm a subtler more, and completely subtle as a soul. So basically, uh, as a soul, uh, how I deal with the problem, looking at this diagram, it helps me. <clears throat> so when I am when I am in a situation in this world, 
I can look at that situation and, and use all my knowledge that I have, I can still, I will still come under the influence of, uh, still come under the influence of what this world has to offer me. I cannot be free from that. I can be the most powerful person in the world, but what is happening here will definitely get me. Either it will make me happy or it will make me sad or, you know, up and down. I will be totally under the influence of this world. Unless I come out of this world and go anywhere here. Then I would have freed myself from the influence of that world. So when I'm here and looking at the problem down here, I'm totally separate from that problem. As a detached observer, I can deal with what is going on very easily. And the more subtler I, I am, I am also more powerful. So I am not uh, getting drawn into any negativity. I can use all my powers and I can, I can uh, see the big picture of what is happening and I can easily uh, overcome that problem. So the, the, the essence of this uh, uh, picture is where I am, what is my stage from where I am looking at this problem? Is my stage here as a physical being or is my stage here as a subtle being? That is it, that's, that's the important thing and uh, the question is how you become a subtle, how do, how do you become a subtle being? You can become a subtle being from meditation, basically. You meditate, in the meditation, we go to the soul world and we come here uh, when we sit in the meditation. And uh, throughout the day when we practice meditation, even when you're sitting, uh, when you're talking, when you're walking, you could still be your stage could still be here in the soul world and somewhere in the subtle region, and you could still be working right here. So that's the stage of yogi stage we call yogi. So you are connected, and you are working in this world, and so that you are you are able to work like an angel, basically. And angels are untouched by with any impurities or negativities, and they're very powerful. They're very close to God. That's what. <clears throat> so that is the one of the, the one of the ways to actively downsize the problem. So don't don't make the problem bigger. In fact, make it smaller. Use your enthusiasm you know, fight with the enthusiasm, uh, hold hand of God and be in a sta high stage as you deal with any problem. So these are the ways to downsize that problem as you overcome this. The next is, uh, you know, uh, the situations, uh, problems, difficulties, all these things uh, will be there. It is the nature uh, of that uh, physical world. In the physical world, it is normal to have problems. It is normal to have difficulties. And a lot of time, the difficulties are so strong that it can get you. And so at those times, what you have to do is you have to be like that giant. You have to have the power to tolerate. And this is the, uh, the giant sequoia. And uh, <clears throat> very a beautiful beings, the sequoias, they uh, can tolerate many, many things. Uh, and uh, even the fire and uh, the uh, insects 
cannot damage. That's how they, that's how resilient these trees are. <clears throat> they fire because they have certain chemicals and uh, uh, the, um, that the bugs will not uh, damage. And even the fire, it can just not destroy it completely. And so we have to become like that giant because uh, even after using all those previous powers, uh, previous uh, mm, uh, tools that we use, the situation can still get us. Things can still break down and we can, you know, we can, uh, it can get us. And so at those, at, at those times, we have to exercise this power to tolerate. It is the ability to, to uh, uh, respond to external and internal difficulties and yet be unaffected by, by them. That means it should not shake me, my internal peace and stability. And uh, one of the very important, so it's a, it's a very important tool Let's say it is a problem of interpersonal relationships. There is a stress between me and somebody else and that somebody else can tell me something bad and it can definitely disturb me if I'm not uh, in that powerful stage. At that time, I have to have this power to tolerate. That means, that doesn't mean that I just listen and just take it, what the, the person has to give. But that means that I accept and I don't create negative response. That's what the power of tolerance means. No negativity uh, is generated by whatever behavior of that other person. So, and the purpose of uh, purpose of no negativity is not for the self, but for the other. That means other person is telling me something bad and I'm not generating negativity because I don't want that negativity to affect that person. So I'm using a a loveful approach to tolerate. And uh, um, it's a very beautiful uh, tool that we, we need to learn. And uh, for that, uh, I think the most important thing I need to have is love of God. If I'm very, very close and very loving, uh, very close to God and totally uh, immersed in his love, then I can tolerate whatever is happening. I cannot, uh, I would not have any negativity for what is happening. In fact, I would not register to what is happening. That's how strong I become. And we have many examples that we have seen in, in, uh, in this world that many great souls had the power to tolerate. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, we look up to them and uh, we want to be like them. Another two is uh, related to the one previously that I mentioned <clears throat> is uh, the power to face, uh, to become brave and cross difficulties basically. In the same uh, um, example that I mentioned before, uh, it's a, in, uh, there is a, let's say there is a, um, another person is uh, giving me hard times, then uh, first I tolerate and uh, 
after tolerating, I do something to diffuse that problem or to, uh, to remove the source of uh, the behavior of the other person. So I, uh, to power to face, the facing means I don't confront, but I do something, I act in such a manner that the other person's negativity is gone. And so that's a very high level power that can, uh, that can occur to us when we learn to tolerate. So first we learn to tolerate, then we can, we can face, facing means then we can uh, remove the negativity uh, from that situation. Uh, so I don't not only uh, keep my uh, thoughts very pure, I also generate uh, love and uh, a power and vibrate that towards that opposite, the other soul and uh, give that to that soul so that the soul's behavior will change. And that is the real power to face. Generally, when we uh, superficially, when we think the power to face means, okay, stand up to your, stand up for yourself and fight. Uh, physically, that, that is right, but spiritually, face means this. A difficulty has, uh, uh, understanding that a, a difficult problem has come, interpersonal relation problem is there. And, and uh, the best way to deal with that is I, I take it without creating negativity. And I also resolve that situation by giving love and power. That is a real power to face. So once a problem is there, and if I use my power to face, then I have uprooted the, the problem uh, from its foundation and the problem no longer remains. And so it's actually, it is a, a very elevated true service that you do for the other soul, although you are facing that. This is a very important tool, uh, the power of introversion, or where you go deep and connect to the source. <clears throat> and so this is the uh, tree right here in the picture. It's a Kalahari desert. Um, I forget the name of this tree I had written down, but this is a very unique tree here that uh, grows in uh, Kalahari Desert of Africa. Uh, and uh, the characteristic of this is the, the, the root of this tree goes the deepest than any other tree in the world. It goes deep down and uh, to the source of the water, hundreds of feet down. And it stands like this, it, it could be total drought or anything, but it will, it will be green and just standing like that. So that's a resilience. And the, the resilience of this uh, tree is because of the root that has gone deep down to the source of the water. And so we need to be like that too. Uh, to deal with any problems, we need to have our roots, very roots go down deep towards the source, the source of love, the source uh, of peace and happiness. That's where we have to connect. And once we are connected like that, we are so strong and resilient that no outside 
uh, atmosphere can affect us. Um, oh, here it is. The name of this tree is a shepherd's tree. It's Kalahari Desert. <clears throat> so, what is the meaning of uh, going deep and connecting with the source? Is connecting first to our true self and then to the supreme soul. And that I drew a diagram for this. This is the world where we live. That's us, sun and mountain and house and all that. But we are connected. And this I would call it as our root connected to the Supreme Soul here. So the more we are connected with, uh, with the source, of all happiness, love, peace, the more resilient we would be, the more easily we can deal with any problems. So the key is to deepen our roots. How do we do that? By remembrance. It's not like we are drawing a line here, but we remember. When we remember, we create this connection. Remember him always. Remember him in the morning, remember him before you go to bed, remember before you eat, remember every time. And the more you remember, the more is this, more stronger is this root. So deepen your roots by the remembrance of Supreme Soul while sitting and walking around for a long periods of time. It's not like I would do this on Sunday only and then expect to have a nice connection here. I have to do it every day for a long period of time to be a resilient being. And so if my uh, practice habit of uh, connection is not very strong, then I will, not be, uh, I will not be able to deal with the problems with ease while living here. And so what is unique about the Supreme Soul? What's the, what is uh, so special about uh, the yoga or connection with the Supreme Soul? Um, because uh, we say that, okay, what do you want from, from the Supreme Soul? You want, uh, you want peace, you want love, you want uh, happiness. But don't we get here? We do get, we, we do get peace, love, happiness here also. So what is so special then? The special is uh, the quality. The quality of peace, love, joy that you receive when you connect with the Supreme Soul is you cannot compare that with whatever you receive here. Day and night difference. And so that's number one, the quality, high quality. Um, and only you have to experience to be able to uh, see that difference. You cannot uh, learn by reading or listening to this, even this lecture that okay, God's uh, love is not better than the love of my mother. No, you have to experience. Once you experience, you know for sure. Oh, there is a big, huge difference. So that's one. Uh, and number two is uh, what you receive from the Supreme Soul. It remains. It remains. It does not get depleted. It does not get depleted. The happiness that I received uh, when I got my college degree, oh, that was great, but where is it now? The happiness uh, that we receive from all the little achievements that we have in this uh, life, the marriage, the children, uh, the job, the first job, the first pay, the first car, all that are transient, you feel happy, but 
where are they now? Where is that happiness? It goes away. But the, the happiness that you receive from Supreme Soul, it does not get depleted. It takes, it does get, it does get uh, uh, merged, but then does, does not get depleted. That means, where is that love that I, I had experienced when, when I had uh, experience with the God? Where is that love now? It is there deep inside, but it is merged by what I got attracted here. It is merged by my drama here. So I just have to emerge that. And uh, this is uh, another very important tool that we need to, uh, we could use to overcome any problem. And that's a power of accommodation, being flexible. And so when you are flexible, then you know, a lot of time uh, when a situation is there, you, it, is, it, it makes a bigger sense to just uh, bow down or, and, and uh, create that accommodation. And that, that will make you, uh, make you a winner with ease. And so it is the ability to accept the idea and presence and nature and desires of others. Doesn't mean that somebody else is having an illegal uh, uh, desire and you submit to that, no. You, uh, you accept their idea, yes, I accept. True, truly not by the words, but from heart you accept their ideas. Yes, that is a genuine idea that you have, and uh, and I will definitely consider to come to uh, to use it. But at the same time, don't change your goal. The my goal has to. Uh, I should not waver from my goal. I may change my course a little bit to accommodate, but my goal I will not. There's no compromise there. Uh, this is the example that I have uh, pictureized here as the example of the grass. You know, we cut the grass, we walk on it, you know, and weather also has a bigger impact on this grass, but the grass always springs back. We just cut it, do whatever, but the next morning it's, it's, uh, it's there, or next season is there uh, creating that beauty again. So that's a very resilient uh, exercise um, by the grass. And similarly, we can also uh, have that type of resi res uh, resilience. Uh, uh, like a river flowing down towards the ocean, you know, any uh, stone or um, any little mountain or hill comes, it will, it will not stop there. It will, it will have to keep flow down. It, it will uh, continue to flow. It may just go around it, but it will always reach to the ocean. The goal is to go to the ocean. That goal is not lost. So you accommodate. When you accommodate, you uh, make your heart bigger, actually. So for example, if somebody uh, comes as a guest in my house, I accommodate that guest in my house, okay, you can live here. That's accommodation power. So similarly, I can accept somebody's idea in my mind and, uh, and uh, test it out. That is power of accommodation and it is a great uh, power uh, that, uh, um, that we can use to overcome any difficulties because do not accept anybody's idea is to oppose that. If somebody has to say something and if I say, no, I don't, I don't like it and I don't think that is right. And that is say, it creates a negativity and uh, uh, then the problem just stands, problem remains between you and that person. 
And so to overcome that, uh, you accept, accommodate, be the big heart. And yeah, that's it. So these are the summary. As you can see, uh, it is a mix of many different powers and virtues that you use to uh, have that resilience. Yeah, that's another big picture that I have. So I'm going to stop here. And the time is 8.08. .08. Anybody has any question, we can, uh, I can answer now or if no question, I can, I think there are some, Uh, some chat messages, let me read that. Okay, this is uh, one of the souls have mentioned that I feel like it is a good, it is also good to feel sadness because it is part of the human experience, but it becomes a problem when you dwell on the past and and uh, spin into your emotions. Yeah, that's very right. It's very rightly said. Um, I love your speech, by the way, it is very powerful. Uh, another so, I think the same one. Thank you for having me. May we also say this this way, be bigger than the problem. That's right. That's so very right. So anybody has any question I can answer? If not, we can uh, meditate. And then uh, You know, we still have about 15, 20 minutes. Yes. Power to tolerate, how do we differentiate from? How do we differentiate it from the role-based? Okay, that's a half question that I have. Maybe um, Srivi, you could you could print out the rest of your question. It's very nice what you wrote. Also, too, this is Elizabeth. Um, it would be great to share, you know, whatever insights that you might have on what Vinod had shared regarding resilience. What is it that you feel you could apply to your own practice? And it's, it's nice to share. You could type it in or um, you can unmute yourself. You're most welcome to share. Um, I like the part about um, we needed to take the step and then it was, it would be like God would be like our wind <laughs> and just, you know, but we needed to do something, not just pray or hope. Om Shanti, this is Shrivi. A really, really lovely presentation. I really love the part where we are, you know, guided to hold the hand of God through all our problems. And, and that was a, that is something that would take a lot of practice, but it would be a beautiful experience, I'm sure. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the question I was asking was, um, when we have roles to play, right? We are 
parents or we are colleagues. And sometimes when people um, suggest things that don't align with what our role demands, at that time, how do we tolerate um, differences of opinions or how do we, you know, tackle it? Uh, like I said um, in the one of the uh, one of the ways to uh, use that power to tolerate in this life is to use the next uh, next power which is power to face. So tolerate just remains how you take the problem. It remains up to that only. How you took it. Somebody did something and what is my feeling about that? that's tolerance. But when I'm in a relation and in a family, I need to be able to resolve whatever is there. And so to resolve means to face. And so I tolerate and then positively resolve it by creating uh, love and a positive vibration and given out to that soul. Um, in a classic example, in a family, we come across many uh, situations where uh, we, we tolerate, but then we just don't do anything. We just tolerate, but then, uh, they, then the problem still remains. And so to diffuse that problem, you use your positivity. And your positivity, number one positivity is love of God. You become very close to God, uh, take his love and vibrate that love to that situation or to that soul. That, that itself does everything. And love is just one thing, but you could use different powers. Somebody is weak and you're dealing with that person, then you can use powers that this person is now becoming stronger or that vibration, not physically, but inside. And that, uh, that spreading the vibration it has a powerful effect on, on uh, your environment and the, and the souls who live in it. Thank you. I have, uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is it is, I know uh, it is, <sighs> We all know, but it is hard for me, at least I would put myself there, uh, that uh, to let go the past. Uh, and I find it very difficult that I keep thinking, thinking about and overthinking, you know, what happened before. And, and also second question is how to deal with someone's short temper and anger? So the first question was the, how to let go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it seems a very big, huge um, a, a problem, actually not a problem, but a, a huge exercise that is needed. But it is very simple actually. To let go, uh, you just have to hold on to something. That's how you let go, like a trapeze. Uh, you know, trapeze in the circus, they just let go and hold on to the next, uh, you know, swing. That's how they go. So that's how you let go. To let go of anything, you hold on to something stronger, something bigger. So let go of the um, uh, situations. Uh, let go of your hurt, your anger, for example, your hurt. Somebody has said something and how do I let go of that hurt that I created? I hold on to the love of God. Mm -hmm. Then I see that it's very easy for me to let go of the problem, the hurt that I, feel, I felt. So you hold on to something very spiritual. So again, that requires a soul consciousness and meditation. You meditate. You connect with Supreme Soul and very easily you can let go. You, do, you would not even feel that you're letting go of anything. You would feel mm -hmm. that you're actually holding on to something. Mm 
That's how you become after some time. And then uh, second was how to deal with the anger. How to deal with the anger. Um, and like anger, the many other things also we have to deal with. Uh, we deal with greed or attachment, all these. How to deal with them is recognizing who you are. That's number one. Uh, I, I recognize that I am a soul. And as a soul, uh, my characteristic is peace, love, power, purity, happiness, bliss, and wisdom. And uh, this love or this greed or anger, that's not me. That's not part of me. And so once you become a soul conscious, it's very easy to deal with those, uh, those vices that's there. And uh, the more, more I practice, the more I'm able to, it's not overnight change that happens. It very slow change happens. Initially, when I begin to, in my example, when I begin to learn uh, meditate, to meditate uh, before that, before that was also, I was very silent type of person, but, but then I would have anger outbursts sometimes. But then once I meditated, there is no uh, outburst like that. And then uh, there are little subtle anger issues that still comes, uh, is there. Like instead of becoming angry, the irritation is there. And that is equal to anger actually. So. Before the meditation, I was getting irritated from small things, but after meditation, that irritation becomes less and less and less. So over a period of time, it almost becomes negligible. Things don't irritate you. In fact, what you receive, it, it stops. You stop receiving any negativity. You give, you start projecting your positivity out to them and then whoever or whatever is generating anger that uh, cease to exist. And what about the anger of others? How to tolerate that? You know, it, it's one thing to, I think the question was asking um, how to deal uh, from Manisha, how to deal with other people's anger, how right. to be resilient in the face of uh, anger. Yes. Uh, so to deal with uh, anger from other person, I have to, again, be in that higher stage where I do not get affected. In fact, I look at that other person uh, with uh, benevolence. I need to, uh, I understand, I have to accept and understand this person that uh, uh, there is a there must be a genuine reason why this person is angry that that has to be my first response that uh, yes uh, there, there must I must have not done something right about uh, right that this person did not like and even if that is not true I have to be in a benevolent mode I have to be not confronting that anger or not creating another negativity. I have to uh, bring out positivity in me and then project it out to this other soul internally. My thoughts should have, should have purity towards them. And uh, I should have very good wish, pure wishes for them. And if there was a genuine reason why this other person was angry, then I should be thankful to them that they got angry and it, it is an opportunity for me to improve. Yeah, because one thing, like you said, you know, if we don't do anything, then problems stay still, even if I don't react to that person's anger or whatever, but then the problem still stays, <laughs> it doesn't go away. Yes, and then uh, one of the methods that I have always liked, very easy method, is to uh, have uh, 
you know, in the meditation, emerge this uh, soul and give the um, a pure wish, have pure wish for them. That's it. Have no other thoughts for them. Only have good feelings and pure wish for them. And that has a lot, that has a powerful effect. And slowly that anger goes away mm -hmm. from the other person. And also I'm new to meditation. So I'm trying, I'm, you know, practicing, but right now it is in its very beginning. So it's difficult as so many thoughts comes when you are thinking about, you know, so that is what I'm facing right now. <laughs> And that's normal and natural. Uh, we all mm -hmm. uh, go through these phases and uh, very quickly you will be, uh, the because the very fact that you have realized that uh, how you are, what your stage is now, that's a indication that uh, it, it won't take too long for you to be that uh, powerful. Okay, thank you. The, the way I see it, uh, we cannot remove the darkness with the darkness. It can be removed only with the light. And uh, we cannot uh, get rid of somebody else's anger with anger. That can be only defeated by love. And if other person is angry, there should be 100 million reasons, you know, but how you are reacting, I think that is most more important because if your reaction is quick, that is reaction. But when you respond, you take a little time to step back and analyze. It's gonna give you a little time to understand how you, you will respond because his other person's anger is damaging other person's health. Your anger is damaging actually your health. If you are calm inside, I think it will make you feel healthy and happy. And other feel, other person will feel guilty actually. That oh my god, the other person is good. I'm the one who is angry. That's how it's. Yeah, and I think I I was creating a lot of negative thoughts and you know, uh, I, I mean obviously right, you think against everything, <laughs> so why why is it angry and why like that all that you know so i wasn't giving anything positive neither to myself or to other person thank you all for your comments and questions any anyone else have a, a question or comment for vinod can I say something? Of course. So sometimes, um, you know, to deal with other person's anger or resistance, for me, what works is um, to calm me down also, uh, thinking about the karmic accounts. You know, I think that maybe I was the same way sometimes for somebody. So that makes me calm and give me more strength to face it to settle the karmic account kind of thing and definitely i must have done because we don't get back anything we have not done that's what that's what i'm thinking but that makes me realize other person's pain if somebody is going through whatever the vices it's not easy for them either right if somebody gets angry it's not easy for them Mm -hmm. They must have some kind of pain which is coming out of anger or whatever. Realizing that makes me more calm to deal with or handle the other person's pain. That's for me and, and that's how I do. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Siyama. You know, one practice I do with, the, with my clients like I ask them to write anger word on a paper. And then I ask them to write D, the letter D in front of anger. And that reminds them it becomes danger then. So it's just a little thing, just you know, practice anger, danger. So the more you stay away from it, it's better, of course. So 
that's why the one of the power was let it go. That was very powerful. Thank you. So we can meditate for three, four minutes and we can end. Yeah, I have a Yes, please, let's meditate. And then I have some lovely announcements for some uh, interesting programs for health and wellness, if you might be interested afterwards. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> So sit back, keep your eyes open, just like the way it is now, and relax, relax your shoulders, your facial expressions, the next few minutes, we will not have any responsibilities. And just bring your attention to the center of the forehead. And look deep inside. to your true self. A living being like a point of light. Clean, quiet. child of the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul who is like an ocean of peace. So with your eyes, the inner eye, look at that ocean of peace. Let your mind follow there. And feel that waves of the gentle waves of the peace that emerges from him. And it washes away your pains, difficulties, weaknesses. And it silences your mind. And you feel that sweet silence in front of the Supreme Soul experiencing that sweet silence. And in that stillness, you also feel that love that he has for you. Very empowering love. makes you virtuous and knowledgeful 
and powerful. And protects you in every way. And reassures you that he is there. Feel that reassurance. Feel that power. And such power that makes you strong and victorious in all situations. Your boats will rock, but it will not drown in any situations. It makes you a very resilient being. You can come across any difficulties, any problems, but you can smile at these problems and cross it very easily as if nothing happened. And you come out even stronger than you were before. So draw that power from him and feel that joy of the attainment. Having received that, slowly return back to this world of our physical residence, the world where we live. And we can gracefully use that power here and live happily ever after. Om Shanti.